Hey everybody, KMO here, and I'm going to talk just briefly about misanthropy, or hating people. I hear from a lot of people, particularly environmentalists, particularly liberal environmentalists, that humans are the ecocidal ape, that humans can do no good, that every time humans have any interaction with non-human nature, they mess it up. And that's just wrong. It's, it's not only wrong, it's just unhelpful. It's a bad attitude to start with. But rather than go on a rant about it, I want to share with you a little bit of a conversation that I recorded last summer with permaculturalist Eric Tonsmeyer down in Holyoke, Massachusetts. He's got about one-tenth of an acre of a backyard, which he has converted into a, a permaculture garden, a food forest types arrangement that is just an absolute joy to sit in, and that's where we had our conversation. So I'm going to play uh, Eric's answer to the question of would you talk about anthropogenic ecosystems? So here we go. Our whole system is built around that. We should probably wrap up yeah, this let's portion walk of the conversation, but Great. before we do, I want, I want to get you to use a particular phrase, because whenever I hear the word anthropogenic, it's almost always followed by climate change. Uh -huh. And that's not the only use for that term. There's another phrase that I encountered in an interview that you did, anthropogenic ecosystems. Yes. Would you say something about that? Sure. Anthropogenic just means created by people, and not everything we do is bad. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. You're not really supposed to say that in some environmental circles, I think. Right. But a lot of what we do is good. And historically, a lot of what we've done is good. Um, not my people particularly so much in, in recent centuries, maybe. But um, yeah, so anthropogenic ecosystems are ecosystems created by people, like farms and cities and gardens. gardens. Um, and some of them are profoundly benign and beneficial. Um, and and uh, particularly, we look at these agroforestry systems, these multi-strat agroforestry systems, the food forests. Um, like there are islands in the Pacific where the where almost the whole island is covered with the multi-strat agroforestry systems of breadfruit and bananas and coconuts and mangoes and trees with edible leaves. And in the understory, you find taro and sweet potatoes and peppers and all kinds of good stuff. Um, uh, there are many examples, historic and contemporary, of beautiful ecosystems designed and managed by people that have great benefits for the environment and for people. And um, so much of the emphasis in the environmental movement has been on shrinking our footprint, which is important because when you do bad things, you should stop. But it makes it sound like you need to shrink yourself down to nothing because you're poisonous to the planet. And we are not inherently poisonous to the planet. We're stuck in a system that makes us poisonous to the planet. Um, but we want to look not only at maybe shrinking our footprint, but increasing our handprint, right? At having a bigger positive impact, at actually maximizing our impact and having it be a good impact. That's really what this century calls for, is maximum impact of a good kind, optimizing our positive impact. Um, and this kind of system we have here in our garden is an example of that. When we got here, this was just bare, bare fill soil, most of it. Just awful, awful. I could provide you some pictures Please if you do. like. Yeah. Um, and now there's about 300 species of perennial plants here. The soil has come back beautifully. Um, and we can tell by the kind of birds that come one indicator is birds. So there was, um, uh, in the first year, it was basically starlings and pigeons and a parakeet came. <laughs> and each year we get more bird species coming, even if they only pass through, because a tenth of an acre isn't enough habitat to support, you know. Uh, but they pass through, and we get more and more birds in residence through the summer as well. We have things showing up like um, salamanders and snakes have come on their own. The cats usually, neighbors' cats usually eat them. But um, we see increasing wildlife here every year. And they're not doing that to make us feel good. They're coming because we're providing. We had a turkey the other day, um, wild turkey. Um, it's very possible. And we take, for example, a lot of the waste from the house comes out into the garden. Food waste goes to feed our chickens or goes to feed our soldier flies. Um, some of the wastewater comes out. We don't have a great water system, that's illegal, but if I like 
boil sweet corn or something, I'll come out and take that water afterwards and dump it out here. All of our, um, my office paper I shred and we use that in the bins with, like you use it for warm bins or we use it for our soldier flies. Um, so how much of your waste can be accepted and welcomed by your garden? You know, how much of your needs can be met? Now we don't have composting toilets, that would be awesome. It's totally illegal here in town. It's <laughs> not my battle. I'm just, you got to choose your battles, you know? Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't want to be like, I have a huge TV, I have a laptop, I got a lot of things that are totally not coming from my garden, right? A lot of our food doesn't come from our garden here, but um, it's very possible to envision and to study examples of human even created anthropogenic ecosystems that really work. That That's really work. Great place to leave it. All right. Eric, great. Thank you so much. That was Eric Tonsmeyer. And if you want to hear that entire conversation with Eric, it was the substance of a podcast that I did last summer. I don't remember the name or the number of the podcast, but you can find a link to it in the show notes for this episode right down there below the video. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, do hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get the notifications when I put up a new video. And join me back here in about a week's time and we'll do it all over again. Thanks.